You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor. Subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments below. Be sure to smash that like button. Billy and Body from uh, On3, the Bengal Tiger, joins us right now. Billy, we appreciate you as always, man. How are you? I'm doing well, Matt. How are you? Man, I'm I'm doing fantastic. It is it is a bit odd, man, because normally we're, we're talking about bowl game and bowl prep and all that, but right here smack dab in the middle is this massive recruiting weekend. By the way, do, am I overstating the significance of this weekend for Brian Kelly and his staff? No, I, I think this is a really important weekend. I mean, you look at what they – finish with when it comes to especially the secondary i mean your two official visitors that are uncommitted who are coming in are two of the better uncommitted prospects in the secondary in the entire country left on the board for the taking and uh, if you get both of those you've completely revamped that secondary in in a year where you absolutely need it you're losing a few key guys in the back in the secondary they lost jalen davis robinson to the portal and you know they're they're after Denver Harris and uh, but the Texas A and M transfer. But if they can get those two guys that are coming in this weekend on top of JV and Tobiano, they just landed. Uh, that is uh, quite the finish, especially at, at a huge position of need for this staff. Let's start with Desmond Ricks. Um, what can you tell us about him, his recruitment, where the Tigers stand uh, heading into this weekend? So Desmond Ricks reclassified uh, to what would be his normal high school graduating class. He would have been too old to play high school football next year. So he reclassifies. He's going to be an early enrollee um, wherever he ends up. And Florida, Alabama, and LSU have hosted him in that, in that order um, leading up to the early signing period. Uh, I think that is the, that's the trio that he's going to decide from. I don't anticipate there being a surprise with him at this point. Um, and, Entering the month of December, LSU sat in a really good spot for him, and, and I still think they're in a good spot. Um, there's a lot of connections at play between um, you know Robert Stevens recruiting him well, Brian Kelly's made him a priority, Jordan Arsmo has recruited him since he was an eighth grader when uh, Jordan was back at uh, UVA. Um, they've really done a nice job working those connections. LSU does have a good uh, NIL offer that is uh, supposedly being put together as well, so that's always a factor. And when you look at positions of need and especially high, high end prospects like this, that's something that's worth noting. And these official visits that he's taken, Florida, Alabama, and now LSU, those will be the final uh, conversations and opportunities for those things to be finalized and put together. Uh, and so if, if everything kind of holds with the way it, it, it was entering December and kind of what I've heard over the last, 10 days or so, then I think LSU can hang on and, and land Desmond Ricks. If it doesn't and, and circumstances change, then, you know, that's just the, the name of the game in recruiting right now. But they they have, the I think, the best opportunity for him to play early. They've got some really good relationships. Uh, he really likes the idea of playing for DBU. And, um, you know, NIL is a part of it, too. So if it all comes together, I, I really do think it's going to be LSU. Um, if, if something happens and falls apart, um, especially on the NIL front, then then it, that it, he'll go somewhere else. Uh, but at, NIL can't be used as a recruiting inducement, as we all know, right? So that doesn't happen. Um, <laughs> Billy M. Body Correct. I, I, Correct. I, I understand your point, though. It's, it's, it, it's, it's such a game of semantics, but we all know that how the game is played. For what it's worth, the recruiting prediction machine there at On3 has LSU with an 84% chance of landing Desmond Ricks, uh, which feels a little overwhelming. After Ricks, with the other guys on campus, where would you say the priority lies? Yeah, it, it's going to be a bunch of commits that'll be on campus with with Desmond Ricks and then four-star defensive back Isaac Smith, who's out of Mississippi. Um, it's an LSU-Mississippi State battle, I would say, at this point for him. Uh, so Zach Garnett and his staff, obviously, you know, reeling from the, the passing of Mike Leach and if it's just hor such a horrible situation um, at any time of year to have to go through and but but right now, you know, they with him being the new head coach, he's, he still has to recruit, he still has to you know try to fill this roster. And Isaac Smith is a huge uh, target for the Bulldogs, and and same goes for Alice uh, Smith. He's, he's somebody that Terry Cooks offered after watching his senior year, um, or about halfway through his senior year, and so they got on him pretty hard, um, you know, from from that moment. 
he was a Louisiana bootlegger, so he's got some familiarity with with some kids from uh, the boot. And um, there's some optimism that LSU is getting the last official visit. That can't be understated with, you know, a kid from Mississippi. It's very hard to pull them out from there, but I think LSU sits in a good spot. He's doing his research. He's asking around. He's trying to make sure it's going to be the right fit because, look, LSU does have Ryan Yates, Kylan Jackson, Michael Doherty uh, already committed. Uh, in that safety class, so they've got some names that uh, you know are really impressive. But um, you know, Isaac Smith is somebody that they really want to add to kind of round things out. Uh, Billy Embody is with us from on three the Bengal Tiger. He's on Twitter at Billy Embody. I'll give him a follow. You did mention Dev- Denver Harris. He's gotten an awful lot of attention. Obviously, for those that don't know, former five star corner spent this year at A and M. Uh, was suspended for the bulk of the year, entered the portal, and he visited LSU this week. Uh, Billy, to the best that you know, how is the staff weighing Denver Harris's ability on the field and his uh, what has probably been described as a, a sort of knucklehead nature uh, off the field with some of the things that happened this year in College Station? Yeah, I think that's a great way to put it. I mean, knucklehead is a is a is a perfect way to put it. I mean, it kind of dates back to high school. He he had some issues at North Shore. He got suspended for a game here and there over like little things like when they were in the state playoffs, he wouldn't give up his cell phone the night of, you know, the, um, the team staying in the hotel. And there's just been things throughout his, his, you know, career and being a high, high profile prospect, people find out about him. Um, and so they're weighing some of those knucklehead type things that he's gotten into to trouble for against what is really, I mean, a, a surefire first round NFL draft pick type of talent. I mean, he's that good. Um, he's a, he's, a, I would say a cut below Derek Stingley, like a clear cut. Derek Stingley is one of the best ever, um, in terms of prospects, but he, Denver Harris is right in line with a lot of those type, top flight first round draft picks, um, that, that have, you know, played corner, you know, across the country at multiple schools. Um, that's why he was so highly recruited and, I think he's somebody that if he gets his head on straight, he would be an uh, unbelievable addition. I think Brian Kelly and his staff are doing their due diligence. I think I think things are trending in the right direction for him to end up at LSU. I don't think that it's going to happen anytime soon, but um, I, I think it's it's something where they they probably feel pretty good about it if um, if we haven't heard that they don't right now. Okay, that's a good way to put it. Um, other portal targets. It, it feels Billy like it's. It, most of what we're talking about is on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, other targets of significance that are going to be here this weekend? Yeah, two of them. Uh, Braden Swinson, the Oregon edge transfer, and then Paris Shand uh, out of Arizona. Uh, both are defensive line prospects. One, in Paris Shand, I really like him. Uh, he, seven of nine games for, for Arizona this year. He had a career high in tackles, tackles for loss, and sacks. I think he had 39 tackles, I think four and a half tackles for loss, three sacks, something like that. Um, big body, 6'5", 6'4", 290 pounds, um, and he'll have multiple years left to play. So um, if you consider Jaqueline Roy somebody that ends up going pro and you bring back Mason Smith and Makai Wingo um, and Jacoby and Guillory and potentially Quincy Wiggins sliding inside, that's a good group uh, if you can add Paris Shan, somebody who – um, LSU has had some relationship with dating back to his days as a recruit. Um, he's a Toronto native. He's from Canada and, and ended up going down to Connecticut for his prep days and then ends up at Arizona. And then Braden Swinson is a, a kind of a big body to add to the edge spot. They're, they lose BJ Ojulari. They've lost Desmond Little. I think they want to upgrade with a little bit of size there um, and, and some you know physicality. And Braden Swinson hasn't played too much at Oregon, but uh, he's had uh, you know experience, and and uh, and Jamar Kane recruited him when he was at Arizona State. Mm-hmm. So maybe getting closer to home. He's from Georgia, uh, and and being back with a familiar face to help him. Uh, he is. I'm looking at the the transfer portal there at on three. He's there. Can you? It's there's a hundred percent of the projections that he go that he ends up at LSU. We're talking about Swinson here. Can you explain um, how how that's calculated? So. The only offer he's reported right now is from Oregon, um, and the only visit he's taken, um, to our knowledge at least, is you know to to LSU or his only offer is uh, from LSU. I think right, I spoke right, on right. that. But um, so that is 
his only option. So okay. um, that's kind of where things stand on that front. Um, you know, Desmond Ricks, uh, you mentioned 83%. I think that's a little high uh, just because of how the stakes are. But I will say this, all the buzz all month has been around Desmond Ricks in LSU. Um, that's the school that uh, has, you know, garnered the most attention um, when you talk with sources. So um, there are some that sometimes make sense. Sometimes there are others that might not be as um, overwhelmingly uh, favored as, as they are viewed on the recruiting prediction machine. And I think Ricks would be one of those. Like, I don't think it's 83% chance that he ends up at LSU, but I would say LSU leads and um, it's accurate in that respect. Okay. Um, Billy, uh, b- a couple more before you go. Uh, no, I always like to ask about numbers. They're at 25 with the high school guys right now. A- any idea where they want to land with the high school number and then with the portal number? Yeah, I, I think that is somewhat fluid, but I would say um, if they sign 23, if Paul Mabenga, the offensive lineman from Georgia, who doesn't want to take any more visits, he's not doing any of that, but he wants to sign with his teammates in the February period, and then Dalen Austin, who is taking visits, we'll see kind of what happens there, and wants to sign late. If those two don't sign, you'll be at 23. Um, you, you will have potentially Desmond Ricks, Isaac Smith and Kamorian Pimpkin, Pimpton, those are the three big targets down the stretch I would say that they're heavily involved with. They could end up uh, signing. That would be um, 26. And then from there, you have two guys coming in, Braden Swinson and Paris Shan this weekend. That would be 28, potentially Aaron Anderson, Denver Harris. Um, those would be uh, 30. I think it kind of makes sense that somewhere between five and seven transfers, maybe five to eight, more mm-hmm. more towards that six to eight range. And then um, you're looking at probably a, a high school class of 29. Okay. Um, so that, that kind of holds with what we had kind of been looking at along. Uh, last one, you mentioned Aaron Anderson. That's the last guy I did want to ask about. I mean, we all know who he was. He was a big giant commit out, or prospect out of car. Uh, was one time committed to LSU, correct, and then decommitted and ended up at, at Alabama. Now he's in the portal after one year. Uh, bizarre to see that guy only play one game in Tuscaloosa, but what what can you tell us about that situation? Yeah, he got hurt, and, and I think that obviously played a played a part in it. I think he's a really special prospect. I mean, 5'9"-ish, um, so a little limited in terms of what he can do, but he's also got plenty of speed. He's a gadget guy. He could play running back. He could play wide receiver. He could be dangerous in the kick-return game. Um, and we all know that LSU needed some of that this year um, and some help in that regard. So um, that's kind of the pitch for him. I, I think Aaron Anderson is one of those players that the situation just probably wasn't right for him to end up end up at LSU. When Ed Edgeron got fired, he decommitted. That's what he said he was going to do um, if that happened. And, and sure enough, he did it pretty much right after that. And he ends up going to Alabama, which was the long-favored kind of spot for him to land if it wasn't LSU. So now he had spent a year in Tuscaloosa, uh, decides to get, get a fresh start. And I think it's pretty natural with Frank Wilson back at LSU that, um, you know, he's, he's kind of taking the lead on it and uh, making him a priority at a position of need as well. Billy Embody on three, the Bengal Tiger. Uh, Billy, it, do you also have the, it's $1 for a year is the offer y'all have right now? Not only that, but you get a really nice Founders Club hat as okay. well. We've got plenty of those still okay. still on deck. So <laughs> that got, that got Musso's attention because he is a hat guy. Yeah, oh, I'm a hat guy too. Um, the fun fact, all uh, 700 of them that, that are still uh, out there, uh, Shay made the joke on the podcast, they're all at my house and my wife is ready for them <laughs> to be gone. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.